The representer theorem is a beautiful, magical, superpower theorem that will absolutely shock you, and the proof is only about three lines. Okay, so we're going to start with the support vector machine uh, optimization problem, where we want to find solutions like to, to problems like that one. Now, notice that uh, I kept the SVM hinge loss here, but the regularization term is a reproducing kernel Hilbert space norm. Okay, because we're using a kernel, so we want to be operating in that space. Cool. Now, um, I'm just going to make this slightly more general. Let's say any loss function, not just the hinge loss, any loss function. And not only that, let's even use a regularization term that is some non-decreasing function of that norm squared. Okay, so this is super general, right? Just, you know, like any loss function you want, any non-decreasing function of that norm squared. Probably thinking we can't do anything with that, but lo and behold, the representer theorem says we can. All right, so the representer theorem says, if you give me everything, give me x, k, the reproducing kernel Hilbert space, hk, give me, give me omega, fine. Then, and, and any loss function you want. Okay, give me that. Then the loss function, the, um, sorry, the solutions of that optimization problem there, that optimization problem there can be expressed in the following form. And it's so simple, it's just mind blowing. So it just says that the solution is a linear combination of the kernels centered at the XIs, where the XIs appear in that loss function. And I mean, I find this really, quite remarkable because what it's saying is that even if we're trying to solve an optimization problem in an infinite dimensional space, HK, where an arbitrary loss function that you chose depends on arbitrary points in this space, then the solution lies just in the span of the n kernels centered on exactly those points. It's just completely mind blowing if you think about it. And uh, like I said, the proof is only a few lines long, so I actually get to prove it. Okay. And then of course, for support vector machines, what it means for us is that the alphas are all we need. And we sort of knew that because we knew that in the linear case, but now we get it in, in the case where there's, where there's kernels. Okay, cool. But that's a very special case and the, the theorem is much more general because it's any loss function in any function of the reproducing kernels, any non-decreasing function of the norm squared. Okay, so the proof here is that um, first we take f and project it on to the span of the kernel centered at the x size. So we're actually gonna decompose f into two pieces. And now that we have an inner product, we have a notion of orthogonality. So we can actually, you know, we can actually decompose f into two pieces, one piece that sits in the span of those kernels and the other piece, that, piece that's orthogonal to it. Okay, so once we do that, um, then if we compute the norm of f squared, um, it's actually the, the sum of the norms of both of them squared. And of course, that simply comes from the fact that we defined the two pieces to be um, perpendicular so that the cross term is zero in that, in that uh, um, norm squared. Okay, so now of course, um, these norms are always non-negative, and particularly because we know that when you take the inner product of f with itself, that's non-negative as we showed in the previous, in the kind of couple earlier videos um, using the fact that the Gram matrix is positive semi-definite. Okay, so in any case, we have this. Now, we also have um, the fact that this omega thing is monotonic, so if you think about omega of that norm of f squared, that's bigger than the one for fs. So as you can see, we're getting closer to replacing f. We're getting closer to replacing f with fs. We're going to show that um, f perp um, is actually we actually benefit if f perp is zero. Okay, so let's use the reproducing property in reverse to get this, um, and then I'm going to use our bilinearity to just separate, you know, f equals fs plus f perp, and then separate into the two terms there. And then, of course, f perp is perpendicular to all those ki's, because that's, what, that's how we defined it. We defined it so it would be perpendicular to all those ki's. And so you're just left with f, um, that inner product with just fs. 
But now k is a reproducing kernel, and so we can use the reproducing property again to do fs evaluated at xi. So that's lovely. So we actually have f of xi actually equal to fs of xi. That's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so what that means is that if we think about that norm, no, sorry, if we think about that sum of losses for um, using f, that's the same as the sum of losses using fs. Great. Okay, so then if we're trying to minimize that um, sum there, which is what we're trying to do, we, we decided that before we, you know, when we wrote down the theorem, um, then we can say that the first term equals this, and the second term is greater than or equal to that. Okay, we just showed these two things on the previous slide. And so what that means for us is that if we're trying to minimize that expression on the top there, we should just set f perp to zero and that'll actually uh, minimize it for us. So we actually benefit by setting f perp to zero. And what that means is that f equals fs. And so um, because of that, the minimizer is in the minimizer fs, that's, that's in the span of those kernels. And that actually is the end of the proof. That's the whole proof of this um, theorem. Anyway, so um, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited about this theorem because again, it, it, it says a lot about the fact, about the power of working and reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces. You can choose any loss you want. You can choose any omega you want as long as it's non-decreasing. And the solution of that optimization problem is in the span of, of just the points you selected. So it's cool, magical. Thanks.